Hello. Welcome, Benedict. So um, I know you from uh, various programs that I've seen you create. And what I hoped we'd do today was would bring some of your stories truly to life using the fantastic musical talents of the band. I think that's what all your stories have been crying out for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For, for decades. So um, <laughs> your job title is Explorer. 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 Explorer on foot. On foot. Perfect. And canoe. Explorer on foot or can on foot slash canoe. OK, so how about we discuss the canoe? Is, is there a particular canoe adventure you'd like to recount? Well, I'm not really sure, but there, there was one particular one that sticks in my mind. I tried to cross the whole of the Amazon Basin, which is uh, 3,200 miles across. OK, so, I mean, playing some lovely sort of yeah. nautical music, but not that um, Amazonian yet. Do you mind, can you make that more South American? <laughs> there we go. That's good. The beautiful, probably the ultimate musical instrument, the pan pipe. <laughs> And um, obviously a lot of wildlife there. We're talking about uh, tropical rainforest, so monkeys, oh. spider monkeys. OK, well, let's just imagine you in this canoe, just paddling Amazon. gently down the Amazon, yeah. with the panpipes just drifting across the water. <laughs> and then you suddenly spy a spider monkey. Which is a, it's a monkey, but it's... Yeah. I think they, what they're looking for is a hint of what a spider monkey sounds like. <laughs> I think in their head, they're thinking, is it like a spider or is it like a monkey? Yeah. What, what is it? It's more of a monkey than spider. It's, it's a very agile monkey. Ooh. Well, in the end, what happened there was the saxophonist panicked and sort of wailed. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out none of them can represent a monkey with their instruments. Uh, so. uh, uh, parrots. Can the, they do a parrot? A parrot. Oh, of course they can do a parrot. Oh, that's, that's... Ooh. Well, we're saddled with that, I'm afraid, Ben. <laughs> so so, uh, so let's, you're still drifting down this so basin. Drifting down, I found myself being shot at. I mean, totally of course it is. blue. <laughs> it, yeah, it is more tense. You're right, it is more yeah. tense. So where, where were these shots coming from? So, you were being well, there I was, just being an explorer, I was paddling along, and then out of the blue, a bullet went right past my head. <laughs> oh, cool, that hurts. Mm, what yeah. a powerful sort of toy gun they had. Yeah. <laughs> that must have terrified you, it was... the noise of that bullet ricocheting past you. Yeah, and uh, this, this shot was coming from very, very near, and I realised that there were people behind me in their canoe chasing me. A chase. Oh, they can do a chase. That's cool. So it didn't start that exciting, but it probably got more exciting, didn't it? It did. Uh, OK, so they're chasing you. Who, who was chasing you? Well, it's the trouble with being shot at is that you can't ask. And that was no, it is, <laughs> a, that is the main drawback with being shot at, isn't it? Exactly, you find that. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was pretty bad. But um, I now know that this uh, was... I'd stumbled across the camp of Pablo Escobar, who was a big drug baron. Yeah. And he wanted to get rid of me. Yeah. And so he'd sent two assassins to uh, kill me. OK, well, let's go back in that canoe. So you're still being chased at this point in the story. Yep. But now we know who the chasers were. These are people who are bad at social sort of pleasantries, are better at shooting. <laughs> so they've shot once. Shot, shot once, and then another shot. Another shot! I think maybe hit a different drum, for Ben. Hit a different drum. There we go, oh, a better shot. There we go. Uh, did, did you survive? I did survive. These shots kept on coming, though. <laughs> so, basically, they, uh, they couldn't paddle a canoe and kill someone at the same time, and I managed to get away with it. I you mean, escaped? How did you escape? I jumped from the canoe into the forest. Into the forest? We're in a forest. OK, we're now in a forest. We're now in a forest. So, I mean, this was an extraordinary thing to me, because the jungle is so scary when you first see it. And or yet, hear it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yet, suddenly, I found myself safe, because I could just duck down away from these two men and mm. couldn't be seen, so as long it's, as I kept quietly there. Yeah, trouble, it's quite a noisy forest, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was uh, a special moment for me. I, as far as I was concerned, I had survived, and I remember just breathing deeply and wondering, well, why I'd been shot at, but also uh, how I was going to survive. How was I going to get out of this place? So you just strolled off into the jungle? I, I started walking, and I suddenly saw this clearing in the forest, and I thought, I'm going to be OK. There are people out there, and they'll help me. So I came across these people, they were loggers, they were illegal loggers cutting down the forest. And they were gangsters, effectively. So they were, they were scary, these people, but I thought, they're going to be... They're, oh, yeah, they're, 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 don't, I know it's frightening music, but you're going to be all right. These aren't the actual loggers. These are, these are musicians representing, incredibly realistically, the loggers. <laughs> Bringing back awful memories for Benedict. So these loggers then yeah, they, helped they, or hindered? Well, they, they, these two men said that they'd take me for a couple of days through the forest. They'd carry my two bags through the jungle. I thought, this is great. These people are going to help me. They're on my side and everything's going to be all right. I walked for a few days with these loggers uh, until we came to a river. And uh, we cut down this tree and we laid the tree across this river. And these two men picked up my two bags. That was everything I needed in order to survive and they walked across this tree to the other side, and I was just about to get on that tree myself, to get on the bridge and to join these two men who had all my supplies 
when they turned around and kicked the tree away. So you're stuck on one side, the wrong side of the river! <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, so we will never know if he survived. But thank you very much, Mr. Benedict Allen! <laughs> What a man. Richard. Different life, isn't it? Different life. <laughs> Barely a mention of porridge or sandwiches in the end, but still. Well, Richard, if you could do anything with your life, if you weren't a computer programmer, have you got a sort of fantasy job, Richard? I'd like to be a writer. A writer? What sort of things would you like to write, Richard? Science fiction and fantasy. Science fiction and fantasy. When I said fantasy job, you mean literally... <laughs> I'm with you, because I, I always wanted to be a, an astronaut. Because I always thought being an astronaut would be the ideal job, just up there... Lovely, with the, in the stars, as we all know, they make this noise, and I'll be up there <laughs> in the stars in my rocket, all alone, except I bring the band, obviously, I bring the band. I just like the idea of being up there. Is that what attracted you to it, Richard? The, the noise, yeah, the peace. Just the distant wail of a passing UFO, of course, and just the vague, occasionally the vague hum of a satellite, just be orbiting the Earth, just me and you, Richard, in the band, for several years. Sometimes you drift over Paris and just hear the faint wafts of a Parisian cafe. Lovely. Just, just coming up past, past the window of our space wagon rocket. <laughs> no, I, I always wanted to be an astronaut because I, I heard this interview with Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, and it's inspiring. Just his life up there. Although he did say, Kim, he did say he's happy now being retired. He said he's, he's happy being retired. He said he's over the moon. <laughs> <clears throat> so we have our very own saxophonist. We have uh, Mark Brown, a member of the horn section, and you, you are officially a saxophonist, is that right? That is correct. Saxophonist. And normally, of course, words ending in ist tend to be quite harsh, negative words, don't they? Like <laughs> sexist or racist or fist. But saxophonist... <laughs> saxophonist doesn't mean that Mark discriminates against different types of saxophone. It merely means he's paid money to play the saxophone. He's employed as a blow through a bamboo reed, so that little noises come out the other end of a tube. That's his job. He's paid very well in the higher tax band <laughs> just to make noises with a tube. So there we are. That's your job. That's your job. Yep. Can anyone name a famous saxophonist? Lisa Simpson. Lisa Simpson, of course. Lisa Simpson. <laughs> yeah. The uh, most famous of all. Yeah, one of the youngest saxophonists, one of the most yellow, one of the most fictional saxophonists. Does anyone name an actual sort of breathing saxophonist? Kenny G. Kenny G, yes, Kenny G. <laughs> Kenny G, of course, the most famous, actually the most... Bizarrely, the most successful instrumentalist of all time. He sold 75 million albums playing the saxophone. Does anyone own a Kenny G album? One. <laughs> He's the archetypal saxophonist. If you don't know what Kenny G looks like, he looks like a sort of cross between Michael Bolton and a very sexy dog. It's, that's the sort of... <laughs> Kenny G actually set the world record for the longest continuous musical note. Uh, would anyone like to hear Mark attempting to beat Kenny G's world record? <laughs> The overwhelming majority says, yes, please, yes, please. OK, are you up for this, Mark? I'm prepared The for world it. record was 45 minutes and 47 seconds, so let's, <laughs> let's see how he does it. could be a very different radio program if he does it. And we're off. And just for the listeners at home, we'll just describe Mark so you get an idea of me. I mean, again, a typical saxophonist, long, flowing body, <laughs> greasy, so oiled up, just wearing tiny, tiny pants, tiny pants. Very tall, very tall. Doesn't actually fit in the room, so he's hunched, hunched over this, <laughs> hunched over this stiff snake. He's going a little bit, he's wobbling a little bit. Swedish, Nordic man. One blue eye, one green eye. And he stopped, he stopped. It's a good effort. Yeah. Half an hour. He did half an hour. <laughs> well done, Mark. Thank you, Mark. So there we are, we're almost there. I should, uh, what's, been, what's been your highlight, Charles? Well, my highlight probably was meeting Richard. Richard. Yeah, Richard, the computer programmer. I enjoyed uh, Richard's stories about his life. and um, Dreaming of being a fantasy writer? Dreaming of, of being a sci-fi fantasy writer. Yeah. If you don't mind, Richard, I'm going to sing you this song about your life. I think that'd be lovely. So this, Richard, yeah. is for you. Wake up without a hitch. It's OK. My name is Rich. Lovely. A quick shave. Then I will have porridge for breakfast. Every day. Upstairs, put on my suit at home. A quick commute, get the train. Then I arrive at the computer programming center. I'm just doing my job. No need to guard the celebration. I'm just doing my job. Today. 
10 o'clock. Ding dong. I start to work. This desk is my only perk. Head down. Pretend to type and wait for lunch time. Ring, ring. Pick up the phone. It's a man with a saxophone. He says, Hi, I'm Kenny G. And I don't believe him. I'm just doing my job. No need to start the celebration. I'm just doing my job today. Lunchtime. Get out of here and get a spaceship through the stratosphere. Shoot aliens, whiz through stars, write a book on life on Mars. I'm a survivor and I got this licked. Much more intrepid than Benedict. I call from work as things are getting violent. I really should have put my phone on silent. Attack pepper dead, nearly cooked in a stew. When I said I needed the loo Maybe for now Had enough of those shooters I gotta get book to work On those computers I'm just Doing my job Employment is be my one Vocation Stand back I need to get through And everything's okay. Richard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Joe Stilgo. Lovely. So there we are. Let the credits roll. Let the credits roll. Let the credits roll. This is a credits bit now. Let's all come and scream like we're out of control. This is a credit song. Let the credits roll. Mark wrote this. Not bad. Let, Let the credits roll. roll. Yeah. Why not? Join Let in. Let's all come and scream like you're out of control. You have been listening to the horn section, written and performed by me, Alex Horn, Joe Stilgo, Will Collier, Ben Reynolds, Mark Brown, and Joe Auckland. The special guest was Mr. Benedict Allen, and the producer was Julia McKenzie. You're out of control. There we go, that's it. We're done. We're done. And you can hear tonight's tunes by Alex and the Horn Section via the Radio 4 website.